Ruben Ice Teller here at MTI, checking in team number 12835, Pixelated, coming on to Indiana. Of course, it's seen phenomenal season so far. Uh, Indiana uh, Inspire winners as well as state champions, so looking really good here and looking for a big uh, performance here at MTI. Help me speak about this robot, by the way. I have Ben, Josh, Joseph, and Colden. And we're we'll going to be talking about, uh, of course, very aesthetically pleasing robot as we go through intake following that ring journey all the way through the robot. Uh, neat shooter. We'll talk about this and dive a bit more. All here coming up on Behind the Bot. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker makes some of the most revolutionary medical equipment and is a big supporter of FIRST and its participants. If you are looking for an internship or a career that supports you being in FIRST, check out careers.stryker.com to learn more. AFTC fans, are you ready for Freight Frenzy? Join us after kickoff live all weekend, September 18th and 19th, as we'll be out at Kettering University for the Bulldogs Robot in 30 Hours at youtube.com forward slash first updates now. You'll get detailed breakdowns of game elements, the field, and prototyping and testing of robot components and assemblies. Watch live, view short videos after, and ask questions for the Kettering team at youtube.com forward slash first updates now. So starting on this robot here, we're going to talk about your uh, intake. Talk to me a little bit more about uh, some of the design process, some of the iterations you went through. How did you come up with uh, this type of design? Yeah, so starting out in the beginning of our season, we had several ideas. We had an all belt system, an all wheel system, and we kind of made a hybrid version of that. So uh, Joseph, if you'd like to drop the intake down for us. So what we did here is we obviously made it tension so that we could keep inside the 18 inches as well as uh, have it be able to stop at a certain point so that it's perfectly heighted with the ring sure. on the floor. And so what's cool about this system is these uh, compliant wheels, they give us maximum grip and they're also pretty much directly powered by this motor. So we have like this massive gear and chain system inside of our robot that powers every single one of these belt rollers as well as the front wheels. And so uh, in taking the ring, we can pretty much hit it anywhere. We have a little bit of a lip on our cart here, so this might be difficult, but we can hit it anywhere and it'll end up inside of our robot every single time. So that's a good uh, transition next to the transfer, right? Yeah. So, uh, so Josh is gonna be speaking more about that. Uh, talk to me more, I'm really curious just on the, the, the whole belting uh, that you have here for it. Uh, obviously, uh, why belts, I'm sorry, I'm not sure what part that goes through, um, but the whole belts uh, on this, uh, what made you come up with like this type of design, a lot of stitching here, that sort of thing? Yeah, so, um, at the beginning of the season, we were just like, so when we were going through our design process, um, we were just wondering, you know, how can we, you know, deliver all this power into one long sure. strip instead of having, you know, several wheels that could jam easier, because we found that out as well, that the wheels would jam. So the belt was kind of like the obvious idea because they use it in the manufacturing field all the time for uh, conveyor belts and moving things around throughout factories. So we just thought, oh, maybe we could uh, create something pretty much the same as that, and so far it's worked 100% of the time. Makes a lot of sense. All right, Josh, so let's talk about uh, in this transfer here, uh, rings going uh, into your robot, obviously, and uh, a couple stages going on with that, too, so talk to me more about that. Yeah, so um, as soon as the rings are inside of the transfer system, uh, they're loaded into our actual transfer body. So our transfer body is pretty much just one single 3D printed part that's connected uh, to an axle at the back of our robot. So really all our transfer has to accomplish is rotating the rings upwards because the rest of our robots built around the fact that the rings are one single pivot away from being ready to fire. So inside of our transfer mechanism, we have a ring lock servo at the bottom. So what that does is it keeps rings from falling out of the transfer as we pivot up. And as soon as we fire, that lock will go down and allow rings to pass through. And our actual firing mechanism is on the or back right corner. And that's essentially, we call it the hurricane spinner because it kind of looks like the hurricane symbol. Sure. Um, but it's essentially, it essentially functions as like a long double-sided cam. So that'll rotate um, and we get um, two shots per one rotation of our servo. And we have it hooked up to a GoBuilda super speed servo. So we get about two rings per rotation of that um, servo. So it's pretty fast. I think we averaged like uh, half a second for three rings launched. Well, Joseph, you're going to be talking to us more about the uh, shooter mechanism. Um, something I'm very interested in, in knowing about. Um, uh, first off, you got this little curve kind of in here, so I'm interested to hear more about that. Uh, and then talk to me about just like how did you uh, determine like how much weight you want to add to your flywheel, that sort of thing. Yeah. So with our with our actual launcher panel, 
we have these two walls here that are 3D printed, and they're made so that we have, so we actually have several different prints of this wall here with the curve we have, that, have, that have different curvatures so that we can change our, uh, how much our rings are compressed on the fly. Sure, so yeah. that So that at different venues, if there are different ring um, durometers, we can easily adjust that so that we have the right compression so we're shooting t at the right uh, trajectory. How often did you find yourself doing that during the season? Um, well, really, earlier on when we got a different batch of rings that were like much softer. That's when we did that at first. And the, although now m most venues have the like the standard ring. Yeah. Um, but so we, we've had this one for a while, but we did use the um, thicker one at, at our first event in person, which had the softer rings. Um, yeah, so with our flywheel here, it's a single flywheel shooter. And we, we found that sometimes we would be shooting under. Uh, and so we wanted to have the we wanted to add extra mass so that our wheel would have a greater moment of inertia so that it would not spin down as fast so that we could keep that velocity going. Um, and so we just added some steel gears here. And then after the ring is shot by the transfer, like Josh mentioned, with the, with the hurricane spinner, it's pushed up in here, it's compressed, and then there's contact with the flywheel to, to get it to speed. And then there's a little flap up here that we can then move up and down um, with, some, with some preset positions. Um, to then shoot for high goal or power shot, or also just shoot from farther back, so that that changes depending where you are on the field, and then from there it goes into the goal and score. So just last follow up, uh, you know this this front piece here that you have that kind of flips, um, like why go with this versus like a different position or a different RPM or something like that, or are you doing kind of a combination of all that? Yeah, so we do use different RPM, but we found that since, since we wanted to have the rings for our shooting, like we wanted to line up at the line that we had, to, that, like with the way that we had this angled, we had to have the angle be slightly up so that we can go right at the line so that it's easier sure, for Josh yeah. to line up each time. Um, and it also gives us greater freedom to just keep this, this like the same. And then the, like there are two different speeds that, that this runs as this runs at as well. So that way we can shoot from farther back or closer. And then this is kind of like, like the last fine tuning part of that if it's off a little bit. Makes sense. Right. Well, Colton, you're going to wrap us up here on the uh, wobble goal mechanism. Uh, so talk to me a little about just some of the design and, and concept. Uh, I'm really uh, curious, like on the claw part too, like every team kind of goes a different method with that. So how'd you come up with what yours is? Oh uh, yeah, we, this is actually our third iteration of the uh, wobble goal grabber. The first iteration we were going to try and have in the back. And then the second one is kind of the same style. Uh, but we ended up going with this design because we wanted the widest pickup area of any um, our, for auto so that we can always get the wobble goal in even if there's a slight deviation in the robot's lining up mechanism. Uh, this claw has went through probably the most iterations out of the whole wobble goal just because sometimes we wanted it smaller, sometimes we wanted it wider. But we ended up sticking with the widest design that we created just so we had the widest pickup area. Uh, once the wobble goal is in, the claw then closes and then it folds back up into the robot because uh, some just have it sitting on the outside, but we wanted it to fold up inside of our robot sure. so that no team can just hit the wobble goal out when we're trying to transport it to the wall. And that's why we're seeing like a, a full-on motor here instead of like yeah. a servo doing that, yeah, right? Yeah, because so. uh, we used the motor to pivot it all the way around. Yeah. And then we created this uh, fancy 3D printed design uh, piece so that it actually has a resting spot at the top and on the bottom of it. So in its down position, it's hitting the bottom uh, piece of the 3D printed part. But when it's on the folded in position, it's hitting the top to keep it in its right positions. Well, Pixelated, thanks a lot for taking the time to speak to us about your uh, team, your robot course. Good luck here at MTI, looking for big performances. But this is a team you've heard about for years, so can't wait to see uh, even more uh, in the future, potentially. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you.